well, it's lovely to be back again. And um, thank you for those who are praying for, for us. Oh, thanks, Carolyn. Um, uh, one of the places where we did go to was Weymouth, and we have friends right down there who live uh, on the Atlantic Ocean. And, well, um, pardon? Well, almost, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you look out of their bedroom window, our bedroom window, it was just lovely. But they had a little text um, on the dressing table. And it was that verse, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways depend on him, and he shall direct your paths. You might have learnt as a child, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And um, I've got this to music, and I, I just thought um, I would sing it with you, because uh, I'm not a soloist, uh, it's just a, a one verse. So we'll sing it through twice. It's a very nice little tune, but I thought that was really special. In all your ways, depend on Him. Acknowledging someone is just acknowledging their presence, but depending on them is leaning on them all the time, and that's what God wants us to do. So. I'll just play the tune first. chapter 1. I can't even give you the number verses, so just listen, because this is the New Testament in modern English by J.B. Phillips. Then I should like to you to know, my brothers, that I have long intended to come to you, but something has always prevented me, for I should like to see some results among you, as I have among other Gentiles. I feel myself under a sort of universal obligation I know something to all men, from cultured Greek to ignorant savage. That is why I want, as far as my ability will carry me, to preach the gospel to you, who live in Rome as well. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. I see it as the power of God, working for the salvation of everyone who believes it. For the Jew first, but also for the Greek. I see in it God's plan for making men right in his sight, a process begun and continued by their faith. For as the scripture says, the righteous shall live by faith. I want us to think this morning about the gospel as being the power of God unto salvation. And that word power in the Bible is dunamis, very, very powerful word. It's the word that dynamite is made from. Some years ago, I had the privilege of listening to Dr. Paul White, who went to Africa as a missionary doctor. Now, the thing about when you go overseas, you find yourself doing all sorts of things, and um, Paul White was also involved in building a hospital, and he needed to buy some dynamite. So he brought this, these sticks of dynamite, brought them home to uh, the little African village where he lived and he got uh, some young men to go out where there were some really good rocks. He was going to use these rocks to build a hospital and um, 
he got one of the men to put the dynamite there. Now, one of the old Africans said, what on earth are you doing? This was in their language, of course. Uh, that is not going to do anything. And um, he just wouldn't believe the power of that little stick with the flame. And, um, but the young men got it all ready and then everyone was told to go and get away, go and get behind trees. But this old man said, I'm not going anywhere. Nothing is going to happen. And so he just stood, they made sure he stood further back, but he just stood there while everyone else was hiding. Paul White lit the dynamite. Well, you can imagine. Vroom, the noise that old man just hit the ground as if dead. And the, the rocks split. And those rocks, Paul said, were transformed into a hospital. You know, it took dynamite. And this is the message of the Lord, of, of through Paul telling us that the gospel is God's dynamite. And what does it do? It, it just transforms people's lives. Years ago, I lived in the Arabian Gulf and a lovely young mother came to my Bible study and uh, I noticed that she was growing. However, her husband was a, a British businessman and I don't think he was all that keen about his wife being a Christian. And um, we met him and he was rather distant. He didn't really want to know us. Um, but you know, she was praying for her husband. And in time, he became a little bit more friendly toward us and uh, wanted to know a little bit about this, a little bit about that. And um, John decided to give him peace with God. Billy Graham's book, Peace with God, we needed to travel somewhere. And when we came back, he said, it's all right, I've been born again. I am completely changed. And do you know, he was changed inside out. He really was transformed. And um, we, he wanted us to stay with them in Cambridge in England. So we stayed with them a couple of nights and I met their daughter and she thanked us. She said, you know, because you shared with my parents, um, my parents' lives were changed. And she said, now they have a Christian family and I'm married to a lovely Christian man and got children. You know, our whole family is changed. And what did it? It was the dynamite of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that just transformed them. You know, we um, read in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting love. Notice that word love. It was, it's the power of love, isn't it? And that God's love is dynamite. You know, we throw that word a love, that word love around in conversation. And we, we, you know, we can say all that really matters is love. As long as we love each other, that's important. Well, let's be really careful how we define love. Because if we play tennis, love means nothing. <laughs> and sadly, there are a lot of beautiful women and beautiful men who've been burned by love. Been burned by you know, how we as a world define love. Human love says, I'll love you as long as you meet my expectations. And if you don't meet my expectations, I'm out of it. That's not God's love. God's love is something really different. He's not like that. He didn't wait for us to become worthy before he made the first move. We're told in Romans 5.8, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners, while we were still separated from him. And Jesus said, I'm giving you a new commandment, love each other just as I have loved you. 
I want you, I want to read you a quote from a beautiful woman who was very disillusioned. She said, For a while I was angry at love. It wasn't all it was cracked up to be. It didn't last. It wasn't worth it. The deeper it went, the more it hurt. Love was irrational, complicated, elusive, and I was done with it little by little. The Lord healed my heart. My anger began to fade. Now I see it's humanity that scars and strangles love. And you know, we need to get close to the Lord to understand the power of his love. And we read in his word that love comes from God. Some years ago, I was reading uh, Sabina Warmbrand's book, The Pastor's Wife. Now, Sabina Warmbrand was married to Richard Warmbrand, who suffered for Christ in Romania. He was in prison for quite a number of years, and um, he was treated very, very badly. Sabina tried to visit him in prison. She was promised that she could go and see him. She travelled to where the prison was, took a long time to get there, cost her quite a bit of money. She didn't have much money. She got there and they said, oh, no, you can't see him today. You know, as if it doesn't matter. And she said, I was absolutely devastated. I took the long journey home. Bitterness and anger were crouching at the door of my heart. However, she said, when I opened the door, I saw a crinkled piece of paper on the wall. And that crinkled piece of paper had been put there by a young woman that she had been helping and had allowed her to uh, live in the little room that Sabina had. She shared the room with her and Sabina's son. And she said that girl had seen this, this picture of Christ on the cross. It was a painting, crinkled. It was near a rubbish bin. She put it on the wall and she said, as I looked at that, I meditated and I meditated. And she said, I looked at him for a long time. I remembered what he had done for me and I decided that from now on, I would always love and expect nothing in return. You know, I've never forgotten those words because if I find I've, I've loved someone and I'm not getting a response then I can get sort of sad and hurt. But then I remembered that's not God's love. God keeps on loving and expects nothing in return because it's his very nature to love. And that's the dynamite, that's the power through which by which he's changing our lives. I'm going to stop today. I had more to share, but I feel that there's been enough to think about this morning. I want you to go home thinking about the power of God's love and allow that love to change you so that you can be the person that God has created you to be. You know, and, and that's what life is all about. We are not really satisfied until God is allowed in our lives and allowed to change us. And I think um, that Carolyn has gone to pick just the right song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, while Carolyn's doing that, I'll tell you just something interesting. But, uh, I'll only take a minute for this. Um, I've been... I've always enjoyed all creatures great and small. Some of you have too. And I've, I've loved James Herriot's books. And so I said to John, if we're going to the UK, we've got to go to Yorkshire Dales. I want to see where he walked his dog. I want to go to that vet clinic. Yeah. We did all that. You know, something I learned about James Herriot was as a young man at vet school, he decided to read the Bible from cover to cover because he believed it was one of the greatest pieces of literature that has ever been written. I encourage you, read your Bible, start with John's Gospel, but surrender your life to Christ and allow him to transform you. Thanks, Carolyn. Amen. Oh, this is a marvellous song, Power of Love.
Hola.